Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Monday edition of the Daily Fantasy Cafe podcast, the Cafe on Air. I'm your host once again, Big Italy 42. I'm going to go ahead and bring you some recaps and takeaways, some goings on around the NBA from the this past weekend and look ahead towards tonight and a little bit towards the future with some injury concerns. So go ahead and get things kicked off with recap of last night's action. Uh, we had a couple early games, Clippers and Chicago Bulls. Pretty good game for everyone not in a Chicago Bulls uniform. We saw obviously already Derrick Rose is out with an injury, another knee surgery. Pau Gasol had a weak game. He was apparently feeling very sick. Tom Thibodeau said after the game, had himself a very subpar effort. And Jimmy Butler now with an elbow injury. Doesn't look to be serious, but Bulls with games on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday coming up. So hopefully for the Bulls' sake, Jimmy Butler just misses a game or two, or maybe he's even able to go tomorrow. But even more crushing news for the Chicago Bulls there. And uh, DeAndre Jordan, another monster performance on the glass. 26 rebounds, just 9 points. But he also added two steals and two blocks. So a solid performance on his end. Chris Paul, as he's been doing, 12 of 19 from the field, 28 points and 12 dimes. Continue to play him whenever possible right now because he is the engine that runs that offense. Spencer Hawes had himself a nice game, just 23 minutes, 14 points, nine rebounds, and three blocks. And the story of the day was Hirotic, Nikola Mirotic, 29 points and nine rebounds and a block. A lot of that coming in the second half with Jimmy Butler out with the injury, but great, great play nonetheless. 3,800 last night on DraftKings. So if you had him on the morning slate, the all-day slate, you got nearly 10 times, I'm sorry, just over 10 times, actually, his uh, his salary. So well done there, Mr. Miritich. And Joe Kim Noah, once again, having himself a solid all-around game. 13 points, 11 rebounds, and 6 assists. So... A guy that you should definitely be targeting moving forward. They like to run the offense through him quite a bit, especially if Butler ends up missing as well. Cleveland at Houston, one of the better NBA games I've seen all season. Saw a great battle between LeBron James and James Harden. A little bit of trolling going on after the game. We saw James Harden allegedly, whether intentionally or not, kicking LeBron in the groin during a scuffle. And... uh, LeBron getting into it with Patrick Beverly. No surprise there. Beverly likes to get under the skin of some other players. But between these two guys, we saw LeBron 38 points, 37 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals, 3 blocks. Um, Shot very poorly from the line. Very poorly. In fact, DeAndre Jordan had a better day at the line yesterday than LeBron did. Coming up just short, Tristan Thompson, huge off the bench, 14 points, 19 rebounds there. And James Harden did what he does, 33 points. Eight rebounds, five assists, three steals, and two blocks. And uh, the trolling going on afterwards, we saw Houston posting some pictures of James Harden, calling him King James. So maybe some bad blood there. Both those guys say there isn't, but uh, definitely going to be a fun, fun watch next time those two teams meet. Coming up next, we had Portland and Sacramento. LaMarcus Aldridge with another huge game, 26 points and 15 rebounds. So he's he's your top-tier option at power forward right now with... uh, Anthony Davis on the shelf, Pau Gasol not healthy, Blake Griffin out, and he's, he's producing at a very high level. Damian Lillard, another great game as well, 31 points, 7 assists, and 4 boards. Rudy Gay had an okay game, 24 points, 8 rebounds, just 1 assist, a little bit surprising, but we did see Andre Miller with 10 of those off the bench. And big disappointment, at least on my end, I know some others searching for value here. Jason Thompson was playing well, just 2 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, and 18 minutes before fouling out, so... Huge disappointment there. I'm not reading too much into it. Um, He definitely got himself in some foul trouble, but at his price tag, as long as DeMarcus Cousins is out for another game or two, he's a guy I'll still be looking at maybe moving moving forward for another game. Uh, Golden State and Boston, no surprise here. Stephen Curry, huge game. 37 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Draymond Green, stat stat stuffer again. 14 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 blocks. That's what he's been doing recently, and we see when he gets extended minutes. I mean, he can fill up that stat sheet and pay off his tag quite nicely without even scoring a lot of points, so great target there as well. Brandon Bass with a double-double, 15 and 12. Jay Crowder, despite only 4 of 17 from the field, 9.17 boards, and once again, Isaiah Thomas, 20 points, 5 assists, 2 rebounds off the bench, so minutes starting to creep up just a little bit there, but he is still coming off the bench, still priced around 6K, a fair price for him at this point around the industry. Next up, Philly and Indiana. We saw Ish Smith 
actually outproducing Isaiah Canaan once again. Uh, not a great line, but at minimum salary, most places he was 11 points, four rebounds, five assists, more than enough to pay off a minimum salary. So maybe interesting to see the difference between he and Canaan moving forward because he definitely seems to be playing much better. Nerlens Noel, who was questionable, ended up with a nice double double, 10 points, 12 rebounds, three blocks, and Roy Hibbert had a huge game. Always hard to pinpoint when those are coming, but uh, 15 points, four rebounds, two steals, and five blocks. So a monster game there for Roy Hibbert. Rodney Stuckey once again off the bench, 12 points, five rebounds, four assists, three steals, and one block. Remains to be seen he's going to keep it up, but four of his last five games, definitely some very solid performances. George Hill had another nice game, 17 points, nine rebounds, four assists, and two steals. So not quite the triple-double, but uh, more than enough to pay off his price tag there as well. Charlotte and Orlando, an ugly game there, especially on the end of Miami. I'm sorry, the Magic. Nikola Vucevic, just 10 points and 9 rebounds. He was a guy that I paid up for last night. Big time disappointment there. He and Tobias Harris combined to shoot just 8 for 25 from the field. Nothing to write home about for Orlando. They were terrible from the beginning to the end. A couple of bright spots for Charlotte, though. Once again, Mo Williams, a great game. 23 points, 11 assists. And Mike Kid Gilchrist with a double-double at once again, 11 points and 13 boards. OKC and the Lakers. Saw OKC missing Kevin Durant, now missing Russell Westbrook after having his face dented and having surgery on that. And DJ Augustine, most popular play on the night, rightfully so, had himself a nice game. 18 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, and a steal. Serge Ibaka with a huge line. 18 points, 14 rebounds, 3 blocks. And Enos Cantor, 16 and 15 as well. Only bright spot for the Lakers was Jeremy Lin off the bench. 20 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds. He's been a nice play off the bench recently for the Lakers. Bring a little bit of a spark into that offense. It's been pretty stagnant at times, so keep an eye on him as well. New Orleans at Denver, not a whole lot to like here. Um, Tyreek Evans had himself a fine game, 22.7 assists, 7 rebounds. And Will Barton, once again off the bench, 27 minutes, 16 points, 10 rebounds, and 2 steals. So it's been a nice value play. It seems like he will continue to be one moving forward as well. Um, injuries concerns, I already mentioned Chicago, obviously. Butler, questionable. Game time decision likely for tomorrow. We'll see if he misses any time. Obviously, Derrick Rose is out. Pau Gasol feeling sick. Hopefully, he'll be better. And Taj Gibson, Porty's going to miss at least another week, it seems. So, with five games in the next eight days for the Bulls, definitely some, some interesting rotation. So, keep an eye on some values to pop up there. Maybe some more minutes for Nikola Mirotic and increase for Joe Kim Noah down low. Um, Robert Covington left yesterday's game with an injury for Philadelphia. Um, he is listed as a game time decision tonight. Maybe questionable. Um, we'll, we'll monitor that moving forward today. Um, Brandon Knight left the Phoenix San Antonio game with an injury as well. That game was a blowout in the second half anyway. So we'll see if Brandon Knight was held out as a precaution or if he ends up playing tonight. But definitely some value to be had with Phoenix if he can't go. Maybe a little extra Eric Bledsoe in your life there. Um, Phoenix does play today, Wednesday and Friday this week. Sacramento, obviously, DeMarcus Cousins has missed the last few games. He is being monitored moving forward, but they do play tomorrow, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. You'd anticipate he'd be back by the end of the week, but obviously the Kings are going to be airing on the side of caution there. Um, Oklahoma City, obviously, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook out. They have games Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Um, Obviously, it doesn't seem like Kevin Durant will be back, but we'll see with Russell Westbrook. Either guy could end up being in play there as well. Moving on to tonight's slate, we've got five games, but actually a pretty nice five-game slate if you look at it. Um, first game here, Toronto at Philadelphia. Toronto, an eight-and-a-half-point favorite. 193-point total. Kyle Lowry expected to possibly sit again with an injury. Um, Robert Covington had his elbow contusion. He's questionable. already mentioned him. Kyle Lowry sits out this one. I'm going to be looking at Lou Williams, 5,100 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DraftKings. He's a guy, volume shooter, not great with the peripherals, but he's going to take a lot of shots, especially if Lowry can't go. He's going to see extended minutes. So more on DK than on FanDuel, but on a small slate, I don't mind playing him either place. James Johnson's another interesting guy, especially if Lowry sits. Just 4,000 on FanDuel, 4.7 on DraftKings. And Grievous Vasquez got the start last time. Paid off his salary nicely. 4.1 on Fandle and 4.2 on DK. 
Um, Ish Smith, I mentioned earlier, if I'm paying down for point guard, I'm much rather go with him than Isaiah Kanan. He's minimum salary on both FanDuel and DraftKings, so I think he's a fine play. Don't expect a whole lot, but he should easily pay off that min minuscule price tag there. Next up, Phoenix and Miami. Goran Dragic in the revenge game, now questionable with back spasms, so we'll see if he's able to go in this one, but definitely monitor that moving forward today. If he doesn't go, I'm looking at Mario Chalmers, 5,100 on FanDuel and 4,500 on DraftKings. Um, another interesting play, Bill, Henry Walker, whatever you want to call him, 4.2 on FanDuel, 3.6 on DK, a little bit of a down game last time out but he was a nice value a few games before see a decent amount of minutes so i'll be looking his way a little bit if uh especially if Dragic ends up sitting and uh eric bledsoe if brandon knight sits i'll be playing quite a bit of eric bledsoe if knight ends up playing i don't know that i'm going to be investing too heavily in him he has 8900 on fanduel and 8600 on DraftKings, so pretty expensive price tag mm just under or just over a thousand dollars less than Stephen Curry on DraftKings so if I'm paying up for one of the two there it's going to be Curry but uh, looking elsewhere in this game Luol Deng a little pricey for my taste coming off a terrible game though so he could be a nice play in a tournament 6.4 on FanDuel 6 point six thousand on DraftKings so <laughs> the line he had last time one of the worst of the season 40 minutes eight points four rebounds one assist eight turnovers I believe he had 6.2 FanDuel points. So definitely a guy that will go very under-owned if you wanted to go that route in a tournament. Dwayne Wade's price still down quite a bit. 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DraftKings. And could end up with a nice matchup here tonight. And especially if Goran Dragic sits, he could take over much, a lot bigger of a role in the offense along with Mario Chalmers. So definitely look his way. Next up, we have Golden State at Brooklyn. 207-point total. Golden State favored by 5.5 in this one. You obviously have Steph Curry. This is your top play. Top play overall on the slate, if you ask me. 10,000 on FanDuel. 9.8 on DK. Obviously, he's got the 50-plus point upside. He did it last night. Don't see any reason why he can't do it again tonight against Darren Williams, a guy who never been known for his defense. So, as long as Brooklyn keeps this game close, I think Curry's in line for yet another big game. Clay Thompson. Cheap around the industry, 7,200 on FanDuel, 7.7 .7 on DK. Got a nice right around 30-point floor. We've seen his ceiling. Obviously, we're not expecting an 80-point performance, but he's got significant upside for you there in that safe floor. So I think he's in play in all formats. Seems that Andrew Bogut may end up sitting out tonight with as a precaution with some rest. Um, he was going to sit out last game, Steve Kerr said, but Festus Azili was suspended, so not enough back court or front court help for the Warriors there so keep an eye on that if Bogut ends up sitting Draymond Green could get a nice bump he's 6.8 on DK 7.3 on FanDuel uh, keep in mind he's listed as a small forward on FanDuel power forward on DraftKings so I like him quite a bit especially if Andrew Bogut sits a fair price and especially on DraftKings where power forward is pretty ugly tonight um, you're looking at Darren Williams here once again he's been playing well getting more minutes than Jarrett Jack. He's still cheaper than Jack on FanDuel. He's at 6.2, 6.6 on DraftKings. So nice mid-range point guard option for you there today. Also, you're looking at in a tournament, I don't mind playing a little Thad Young. 6,000 on FanDuel may be a little bit pricey for me, but at a weak power forward position, just 5.2 on DK. We've seen Golden State, especially when David Lee is out there, power forward position, they struggle to defend. Maybe they go small and we see Draymond Green with some time at the five. And that would be a nice little matchup there for Thad Young coming off a nice game last time out. Also, Joe Johnson, a guy to look at, 6.4 on FanDuel, 6.1 on DraftKings. So, guy there, nice cash game play, pretty solid floor. And I'm not investing too much into these big men here. I guess you could take a look at Brook Lopez in a tournament. But I'm not investing too much into a guy off a bench despite a smaller slate. So... One of my favorite games of the day here, biggest total, rightfully so. Very close spread, 210-point total, 3.5-point favorite for the Clippers at Minnesota. Obviously, Chris Paul, I've mentioned it earlier. Everyone's been mentioning it since Blake Griffin go down, went down. Play Chris Paul. He's 10,000 on FanDuel, 9.9 .9 on DraftKings. So if you can afford Chris Paul, get him into your lineups. 
He and Curry look like the top plays overall in the entire slate. J.J. Redick listed as a game-time decision with some back spasms. It was kind of not really spoken about until after the game. So if he does sit, I do like Jamal Crawford quite a bit in this one. Jamal Crawford's in play for me anyway, but at 5.7 on FanDuel, 5.5 on DraftKings. Very scoring dependent, so I think he's still in play, but almost a must play for me at shooting guard if J.J. Redick ends up sitting out this one. DeAndre Jordan next up. Obviously, we've seen some gaudy rebounding numbers from him and in a nice spot here once again, but a little pricey for me on FanDuel, 9.7. Really expensive for a guy who needs about 50 points just to hit value there. 8.9 on DraftKings. It's a little bit more bearable, so I might target him a little bit more there. Uh, Ricky Rubio, his price is getting up, but he's playing well. Back-to-back 40-point performances, 7.5 on FanDuel, 7.6 on DraftKings. So definitely a guy with some upside. Obviously a tough matchup there against Chris Paul, but I think he's a great tournament play. Andrew Wiggins also in play here. 6.6 on FanDuel, 6.4 on DraftKings. And thing to note down low, Nikola Pekovic dealing once again with an ankle injury. And he played just 92 seconds in the second half of the last game. So if he is unable to go, Gorgie Jang will be a very popular player on the industry, rightfully so. 5.9 on FanDuel, 5.1 on DraftKings. If Pekovic is unable to go, I will definitely be slotting Dang into a bunch of my cash games. He should be locked into big minutes there. And you don't love the matchup against DeAndre Jordan, but I'm still getting him in play. He's got the long arms. He's He's got some upside, and he should have a safe 30, 35 minutes floor here tonight. So big fan of his if Pekovic sits. Last game on the slate here, we have New Orleans at Dallas. Dallas favored by 7, 197.5 point total. Tyreek Evans, your top option, of course, for the Pelicans with Ryan Anderson and Anthony Davis out. He's got a great price on DraftKings at 7.7. 8.4 on FanDuel. Now he's listed as power, I'm sorry, a point guard, as everyone knows, unfortunately. Moved over from the shooting guard eligibility at, at some point, so I believe that was about a week ago. Unfortunately, it's the only place you can play him. He's obviously behind Curry and behind Chris Paul for me. But he's, he's got to be the good third option there if you want to go that route. DraftKings, you could play all three of them. Um, you could look at Eric Gordon. I'm not a huge fan of his price tag. Doesn't have significant upside, but nice cash game play. 6000 on DraftKings. Got him at 6.3 on FanDuel. And uh, Monte Ellis has a very cheap price tag right now. Guy with some upside. Hasn't had a big game here in quite a while. If you're looking at his recent game logs, kind of a big disappointment on Ellis's end here. Um, his last... 5, 24.7, 22.4, 29.7, 32.6, and 21.4. So he hasn't been producing at a high level, but does have significant upside. And at 6.7 on FanDuel, I think he's certainly in play at shooting guard. And 7,000 on DraftKings, it's a fair price. I won't be going too heavily into him, but uh, he definitely has some upside and a decent matchup. Um, Chandler Parsons said he's hopeful to play tonight. More in play on DK for me, just a little bit at 5.7, 6.2 on FanDuel. Um, I would need to know for sure that he's not on a minutes restriction if I'm going to be slotting him in tonight. But definitely if we hear that he isn't, he's in play for me. And uh, if he doesn't go, once again, Alfaro Camino, 4.8 on FanDuel, 4.7 on DraftKings. Certainly be in play. I know he burned people two games ago, but nice 33-point fantasy point performance last time out. So guy who can do it all. So definitely look his way. Um, you're also going to be looking down low for New Orleans. Dallas, despite Tyson Chandler, who is looking at like questionable for tonight's game, he is a great rebounder, not a great defender. And Dallas as a team, one of the worst in the league on the board. So if you're looking at Omar Ashik, 4.9 on FanDuel and DraftKings both. He's got significant upside with the rebounds. Not a big score. Doesn't play a ton of minutes, usually mid-20s right around 30 sometimes. Um, if you want to go the GPP route, you can go Alexis Ajinka, 4.8 on FanDuel, 4.9 on DraftKings. Just 22 minutes a game over the past few, though, so very concentrated value there. You're not getting a lot of opportunity, but I think he's certainly in play. And that's going to wrap up today's slate. We have a lot of great content on the site, dailyfantasycafe.com. We've got a great market article by Spencer Limbach, highlighting some plays at certain price tags, where they're better 
suited to be played and where you should be targeting them compared to other sites. So I mentioned that just a little bit, but make sure you head over to the site, check that out. We've got some great strategy articles to help you get started. Cash games, GPPs, anything you could ask. Once again, I'm Big Italy 42 and I will see you tomorrow.